I'm going to use this new software called Archaos Brand BJ. Yeah, my name's Grant, also BJ Culture, and we're going to do some presentations on the Archaos Grand DJ. Grand DJ is a visual application that you can tie in with music, play it solo via DJ, via DVJ. And I'm going to show you how we can do the mini mapping to the BMS2 American Audio. We can scrub, scratch. Loss fade, all sorts of effects, parameter controls, videos. Also, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of demo on how all of that works. Right now, I'm just going to do some scrubbing. I've got it in full screen mode. I'm going to show you the power of what is actually happening behind the scenes. Bring that to a slot. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm going to scratch the videos. Video speeds, slow them down, speed them up. So it's a great application for doing your DJ and this controller makes it really simple. The software is, I'll show you the software. It's a simple cool screen mode right now. And this is DJ. So I'm just going to go ahead full screen mode. So this is the interface with uh, Grand DJ. Grand DJ has eight channels of visual and audio that can be mixed. You can use A channels and B channels. So if you wanted to split those channels up and have four on the A side and four on the B side, you can really have cross-fading with audio that follows video. You can transition back and forth between audio and video, set it up 2x6, 1x7, all sorts of combinations of visual effects. And each one can have its own uh, channel for levels of opacity. Isolate that down to just one layer. I'm going to stop the video. And now you can see how I'm scrubbing, scratching that video. So, what we have in the interface, which is incredibly customized, we have these panels that you can move around and shift around inside the application. If you want to have this window, let's say, down in the bottom side, sharing it down here, you can move it around. Have it sharing uh, real estate in different places so you really can see everything that's happening in uh, the software. And so let's start at the top. We have various mixing modes. Mixing modes means that you can create different compositions. You can turn off various layers. You can turn on layers to bring up two channels. And I'm going to jump up to uh, layer number two. If I turn off the mixing mode, we just have the straight video. That's what it is. That's what you're seeing. And it's, it's full on with all of its color. Or not color, depending on how you want to put this in. If you turn on a mixing mode, this is on the top of analysis only, you can create various layers of ink modes or copy modes, turn into negatives, uh, create different masking shapes lay and deposit on top of your other video. So we often have that as a top layer with other kind of background video underneath. There are various mask modes, polarizations, all within the mixing uh, We drop down to position so as you can see a little bit more of the position of this. Position offers you the ability to move with the mouse. You can move your video, clip around, uh, or you can do it on the Y, X, and your Z is like your scale. So you can, you can position those. If you 
want to stretch them, crunch them. You can do all sorts of shifting uh, rotations in every direction. And then you have the ability to restore it back to full screen. And you can even set that to a hot key so that once you're done kind of manipulating the tool in it, just hit a button and bring it right back to zero. There's also lots of different levels of uh, presets. You can set it to the top, bottom, right, left. You are working at 16.9 and you want to set it out to a 43 screen, vice versa. You have lower third. So there's two other presets to make things very simple. In our effects, I'm going to solo uh, channel two so you can kind of get a better idea of so We're going to add some effects. And this is in the effects panel. There's a few ways that you can go to the effects. You can scroll over to the side and you can look at your effects and it gives you a preview in the window down at the bottom of what happens with an effect if you were to apply it to a cell or apply it to a layer. So I like that dot screen effect. I could drag it directly onto my layer like this. And now you see that uh, the layer's turned on. There's all sorts of effects that have now popped up in this window. And if I wanted to assign those effects to some of the knobs on the PMS2, I could easily do that by turning on a mini map mode. I'll throw all them. Everything turns green. And now everything's customizable and editable. So I want to uh, be able to change some of these parameters. I'm going to do some quick little mini assignments. And jump down here. So we can quickly make some little uh, mini edits and, uh, in the panel. And now when I'm changing these knobs, you get to start seeing that we have all sorts of parameter controls. And if you use your mouse, you can see where your percentages are. Over, hover, hover. All right, so if I wanted to change out and play with different effects to see where my composition is and how it's looking, I can tap quickly over and just use all sorts of uh, different effects. Each effect, uh, not all of them, but a lot of these effects have various parameter controls. No one is going to pop up in the effects video. Fish eye is just a different fish eye. But you can just change these, flip them around, put all sorts of different all right, so I'm going to just leave that blank for a minute, and I'm going to talk about the visual panel. So I'm going to slide this panel over, give us a little bit more window. The visual panel has looping modes, so you can ping pong your video. So it's going to start playing once it gets to the very end. It starts playing reverse back and forth, plays once, uh, plays continuously. You have your speed gains, which I'm assigned to pitch on the BMS2. Stop it, speed it up, default speed. There's audio level controls. Uh, you can scratch by bringing down the stop. You can scratch these layers. And do all sorts of uh, controls in this visual window. We can also assign it so that whenever I trigger in the cells down below, if I wanted to automatically assign to whatever layer in my layers, I can easily assign that right here in this window by just clicking on here and making an assignment. Say I want it to play in layer 2, and assign it to 2, and now this clip will always trigger in layer 2. Alright, uh, I just want to show you some of the text capabilities. If you want to put up the band's name, the DJ's name, your own name, whatever it is, you can easily do that. In this mode, I just triggered a DJ clip. It's now playing in layer, layer number four. So we bring up layer four. It defaults to grand VJ. I can put in things like VJ culture. Whoops, I didn't that spell. So we can 
bring in text files and they get through this really nice key capability that overlays. There's multiple layers and levels of uh, flash files that can become native with the Grand VJ application. And uh, you can quickly drop in. I'm going to show you where some of those are. Over to you, your uh, right hand side, there's the sources. The sources give you all sorts of different sources. One of those is a live camera. So if you want to bring in a live camera, just highlight it, drag it onto a cell, and I'm going to trigger it from my keyboard. And right away you have this nice king that comes up on top of it. And a live camera is treated just like a video, where you can do all sorts of uh, controls to it. If you want to control coloring in the you can control colors, you can assign effects to it. All sorts of crazy effects. Let's turn down uh, our layer of Grand VJ. And I can drop a visual effect right on top of, let's see, let's go with this one. So we can quickly just drop some kind of visual effect on there, and we're going to treat it just like we would any other. Uh, so, you can colorize, effects, anything, any kind of parameter can be assigned. Uh, so, I'm going to bring back another video. I did my ugly mode off of this. There's a couple of different modes that we can show. One of those is that we just trigger a clip by either using the MIDI controller, the MS2, and just triggering a visual clip. That starts playing the whole movie file. Or we can turn off the toggle. The toggle is the same for audio, it's like a trigger. So let's say you're a drummer or a keyboard player, and you want a, a different visual effect for each hit of the snare, each hit of the drum pad. So what you would do is in this mode, up here at the very top where I have the mouse, it's a toggle latch. And by using a latch feature, you can unlatch or latch. By latching it on, it lets the video play continuously. When you unlatch it, it's going to be more responsive, and it's only going to play while that keynote or that MIDI note is being held down. So you can do that and by just triggering it so it's going to turn on and turn off. Where I like to use that is in a very a different mode, which is called uh, synth mode. Uh, so if any of you are familiar with older Grand DJ or older Archaos, Archaos has been around for over a decade, and this may look a little bit more familiar to some of you, that you may have uh, this layer. So now it's latched off and on. So when I let off the key, it stops playing, and I can do all sorts of fast triggers, hold down keys, and continue to have visual effects play underneath you know, layers. And if these were drum pads or trigger finger or some kind of other controller, you'd be getting a very fast response. And you can assign an audio note to that so that audio and video following each other. One of the new features in Grand VJ, I'm going to take you back to mixer mode that has really expanded the whole capabilities of Grand VJ, and that's that it is natively supporting Quartz Composer files. Who here is familiar with Quartz? Okay, you are. Great. So, uh, Quartz Composer files are natively built into uh, OSX, right? And you can take those files and bring them into our chaos as either an effect or it can be kind of like a query line. And when you do that, you expand its capabilities by having the effects. You can build your own effects, build parameters for your effects. So whenever you have those as an effect, your Grand DJ is going to show up and it's going to have a QTZ at the end of the file extension. And it'll be treated either as a video or as an effect. So I'm going to trigger these layers. And so you see uh, that we have coming in on layer three, those nice blue bars. That's treating a Quartz Composer effect just like a video file. If I want it to be something that's more like an effect, I can also do uh, trigger effects. And those effects then treat your other videos below it. And it creates all sorts of uh, parameter controls to those layers. So we have these lines overlays. Bring up the different uh, videos. 
and we, here's our visual effect. So that's wet, and there's dry. And these are just basic uh, quartz components. So Grand DJ has its own built-in effects. You can add your own effects and build out your, your system. Uh, create new uh, compositions. So the way I've laid this out, for me, it works native, very intuitive with the, the VMS2. Uh, I've built it so that I have three layers of grids, so three rows, and A. So that represents all the buttons that are on the VMS2, and I split it in half. So half of my video assignments are on this side, and they'll all be triggered on channel 2 and channel 4 of the VMS2 controller. Allows me to do my scrubbing and scratching on channel two. You can also do crossfade uh, layers on A. This off. And down here in A, I've got that compressed, so I'm just going to do a quick little default setting. Brings it back up. Go, and just a hot key brings our video back up to its full screen position. All right. So some of the uh, media files that Grand DJ plays plays all sorts of quick times. All the codecs in the quick time for family format, ABIs, flash files, ENG files. So if you want to put a nice text layer, uh, you can add a text layer. That is ENG, like we'll do that right here. Now we've got layers like Grand VJ that come in as a nice clean key on the top of all of your visual effects. Do that for video files as well, the old alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha allows you to remove the transparency uh, of your layer, so it's just uh, the elements of the video file that you want to use. All right. So I've showed you the, the front side of all this. Now let's take a look at the back end of the page. Bring up the preferences. In the preferences, there are some incredibly powerful tools. One of which is that you have multiple screen outputs. If you want to have uh, four projectors, four plasma displays, you could do create any combination: one by three, uh, four by four, two by two. And that's all done in uh, the lower half of the application here. And you can do edge blending for projection with all of your soft edge curves and widths. So really get a nice clean, uh, nice clean blend. Also, we have in our output, we have keystone correction. And I can't tell you how many times I've been up on a ladder trying to you know, do keystone correction on a projector where I really wish I would have had it in front of me on my laptop. So you can easily use this on your output. You're not going to see it in your preview, but if we have this on our output, you can see that I'm doing all sorts of perspective shifting to get my layer, my, my video to line up nice on the screen. And this is just built in right in the application. We have light and dark skin modes. Great if you were in, uh, working in outdoor festival during the daytime, you have it in light mode, and uh, you have a much better view of the screens. We have OSC. So OSC allows us to use iPhones, Android devices, iPads, all as a controller uh, to control the parameters of Grand VJ. So there's three different mapping modes for Grand VJ. You can do that with a Control Shift M. Everything turns green, and now we're going to be mapping.